am so excited to be here with these women. I wish you guys could have hung out with us for the last 30 minutes backstage, because now... So much fun. Maris and I just met tonight. We're best friends now. Best friends. Uh-huh. Uh, and I posted on Instagram today, my son has been in love with Philippa for a very, very long time, and now has to contend with my daughter, because my daughter, George, is obsessed with this book. And I... and. For a six-year-old to really connect with something, it has to be authentic. And she really, really connected with this because she suffers from stage fright. Mm -hmm. And so going back to six-year-old you, I like to set a foundation. What were the books that spoke to you two as little girls? I remember, when well, I remember it because my kids came home with it recently, well, in the last many years, but um, the Streganona. Remember oh, the pasta yes, that yes. just made you want to eat bolognese yeah. for days? Um, Stragonona was a big one for me that I loved, loved, loved. Um, all the Berenstein Bears were such big ones. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with the giving tree. I mean, I mean, you can't go wrong with the giving tree. Angelina Ballerina, that Aww. was another one. You know, in my mind, I was like, yeah, these mice, that's what their lives are like. Sure. <laughs> that's how all mice live. Yeah, exactly. It's like that or Ratatouille. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're setting out to entertain small people, it's a tall order because you have to put yourself back in their bodies. And so how did you guys decide to do a picture book together? What was the catalyst for that? Well, it all started back in the 2018 Pasquale Christmas oh. festivities. What well, usually goes down at those things? Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so many things, but, but lots of joy. And Maris and I were off in a corner having a conversation, and um, the Eliza Hamilton picture book had just come out, and I did an afterward for that. And we were talking about children's books and children's literature, and Maris had shared that she had written some board books of her own that she was you know, working on, and I was like, oh, it'd be so fun to write a children's book. Let's write one together. Yeah. And that's really where it started. And then we, we met at, we were just talking about today, we met at N Bistro downtown, and we had like a journaling writing session over like lychee martinis. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is how all good children's books start. <laughs> But mostly just to ask ourselves, what is going on in the world right now? Yeah. Which was a lot. What do we care about? What do we want to impart to young people? And I think for myself, you know, coming off of Hamilton, my, the biggest shock was how many young people connected with it. I mean, I knew it was cool. I knew that the musical theater crowd would love it. But for instance, your son, Gus, yeah. was like Six. as tall as this table. <laughs> he was so small and he was dressed as George Washington. Knew every word. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> astonishing for me as a parent to see what your kids are drawn to on yeah. their own, yeah. naturally. Right. And that's right about the age, this age of like Piper Chen is right about the age that kids really kind of start separating from their parents and picking the things that they like. Mm -hmm. And so to have my son fall in love with you was fantastic. Like, you feel like you've really accomplished something. <laughs> Maris, in your experience in child development, you know, what was the, what was the story for you? Why did you want to write a book? Mine came from less from being a psychotherapist and more from being a mother. Yeah. I had my two boys who are here tonight. Hi, I'm so boys. Happy to see them. What's up, um, dudes? And they, we were really inundated in picture book world. And to be a parent, you know, as any grown up, many of us have been, but to be the parent that a child crawls into your lap and you share that very, very special moment of reading to them a book mm -hmm. that in this picture book world, typically they can't read on their own yet and they're connecting it really through your voice, through your, how you're putting emphasis on it, really what your kind of spin is. And the books that we kept reaching for over and over again and how special that time was. I've said it a million times, I mean, reading to them is my favorite part of the day. And it still is, now they're just you know, much, much bigger books or maybe they're reading along and things like that. But to have had that experience, and this was you know, during that time, that was really what was going on. I was reading to them and felt like, I, I'd love to be a part of that. I'd love to be something that's actually more creating a piece of it. So when Philippa said, well, let's do it together, and also, by the way, if Philippa Sue asks you to collaborate, yeah, you, you do collaborate, that. right? You <laughs> jump on board, and it was incredible, and it was a beautiful, amazing collaboration. But the beginning for me really just came from wanting to write something for those two gentlemen. I know sometimes when you're performing, sometimes the role can start to infiltrate your personality, and I've had that happen to me. 
when you were portraying Eliza and, you know, the show ends with Eliza opening up this orphanage and becoming like a protector of children mm -hmm. and really an advocate, how much did that affect the work that you wanted to get involved in? It, it, it changed my life completely yeah. because I, I had a very like clarifying moment where I realized that my, my interest in art making involved activism mm -hmm. and community outreach. The ability to play her opened a world of possibilities to reaching out to a community of Graham Wyndham folks that I, I wouldn't have been connected to otherwise. So definitely, you know, she was such a role model in her own right, but for me to get to step into her shoes, I felt like it was my duty to go deeper and not only know things about her life, mm -hmm but to experience the things that she was experiencing as a woman in the city, engaging with people, engaging with young people, and writing a children's book was definitely aligned with that. How cool to add to that legacy, hundreds of years later, and be here in the oh city. Oh my gosh, she that. has no idea cool. that we're talking about her so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Conjuring it, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> no, I, I joked with Varys backstage that I come from a place where People don't go to therapy, you know? Like, I did not come from a family that talked about mental health or feelings or anything like that. And so my journey in motherhood was figuring out how to break certain cycles mm -hmm. and how to speak to my kids and get down on their level and honor their feelings, which is really a core theme in this book. And it felt validating as a mother mm -hmm to have this book back up all the stuff I've been telling my daughter. Like, be mad's a choice, babe. You could <laughs> also make other choices. Um, I, I've always looked at children's books as therapy for the kids that don't necessarily have access to it. And so what were the conversations you guys had about making this accessible to the kid that's out in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the pitch was the start, which was... Piper is kind of like my avatar. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's inspired by me, but she's her own little girl, a real little girl living in the world who has really big feelings and is trying to navigate through the world in some way. And we, at, at the time, you know, this was 2021, we were very adamant that we wanted to um, highlight an Asian voice, an Asian character, and that felt very right and very true to us. That's and then, and necessary, and and then once we went on the ride, you know, Nai Nai came into the picture, um, her heritage came into the picture, and then we were sort of thinking about this idea that was inspired by something that actually happened to me. Like I had horrible stage fright as a kid, didn't I refused to go out for one of my ballet recitals, you know, so so frightened, Aww. Aww. and so cute. we ran with that idea, and and it was really interesting because like we wanted to create a story that was. Um, you know, entertaining and beautiful and joyful, but also we were like, well, like, what are we, ta what are we imparting to these young minds who, this might be the first book that they ever hear. This might be the first story that they ever hear. So what do we want to say with that? And I think when I was younger, you know, the idea was, okay, well, you're feeling anxious or nervous about something, just push through. We say, yes, you know, suck push it up. through. And, and there is value in that in some way, but if I had had a tool that allowed me to have access to the feelings that I was feeling, I probably would have chosen to push through anyway, mm -hmm. instead of living in agony and you know being at my <laughs> piano recital being like, I'm so nervous, <laughs> you know? And, and it was really delicate, those conversations we had, and especially with Maris being a psychotherapist and, and being a mother, the language surrounding how you talk to a young person mm -hmm. was so valuable in terms of her input. Yeah, we were very intentional with our language, and you know, I don't, I don't work with children directly, so I work with adults, and I joke, but most of the work we're doing is so you see the after about your childhood, yeah, you know, yeah. right? We're looking at your childhood. Most of the lessons we're talking about in this book, which aren't particularly overt, she's also this like very sweet, fun, yeah. like singing it's through such the a world, light book, light character, yeah. exactly. So hopefully, it's kind of a little, you know, sugar with your medicine kind of a bit, um, but it's it's the same stuff that we're talking to so many adults about about that two emotions that may seem to conflict, that you can hold both at the same time, and both are totally valid in you, yeah. and to recognize that, and to be still for a moment to acknowledge both of those feelings, 
and to live with intention, right? Piper gets the choice of what she wants to do and to be intentional about how you wanna move forward in your life and what those feelings mean, where they show up in our bodies and what they're really telling us about who we are mm -hmm. and how we wanna move forward. And that was very intentional in terms of that language. And you know, Pippa's raising the point also about Nanai and that character yeah. and, and that too, because the process for us was such a joy to be more curious about each other. I mean, we're sisters-in-law but to really be curious more about our own backgrounds and our own ethnicities and culture and knowing that that changes, and especially here in the States where the level of acculturation can be so different based mm -hmm. on generation, that was something that was really important to us to highlight as well, especially at that time with, a, with having this Chinese-American protagonist. No, I love the culture that's added into this. I, I think I took for granted growing up that I grew up in a really diverse area mm -hmm. where you know there were people from all over and you just expect, oh, it's like that everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came to college in New York that I met people that had only ever been around people just like them and the culture shock was so crazy. And so for me, for my kids, representation is so important because you know we're all in the same boat together, but we all have different experiences of that. And knowing that the American way of doing things is pretty singular, you know, in other cultures, you have multi-generational houses and that's normal, you know, and it's lovely. What were some of the things that were really important to you to put in here from your personal experience? Well, it, it, writing a children's book, I'll go back and then I'll answer your question, is so interesting because it's like writing a poem. Mm -hmm. There's a lot put into it and a lot of story and a lot of ideas and then you really have to like parse it away to find the essential part of the story that is going to be put to picture ultimately. And so a lot of the work that I was doing, it almost felt like a therapy session, but like a lot of the work that I was doing was trying to figure out like in my childhood what, what parts were important and what parts are serving this story, one being the character of Nai Nai, who is very much the adult figure in this story, and then another being this, this aspect of the Chinese language. You know, I, I didn't grow up speaking Chinese. Um, I'm second generation, so that means that my father was born here and my grandparents came here from China, and so I didn't really speak Chinese growing up, if anything, like I don't pronounce these words any better than anyone who has never heard Chinese ever in their lives. Um, but I think that was important because we were writing a story that was really specific to her as a character. And I think that's where we always like went back to. We were like, oh, should we should she be representing more than just herself? Yeah. And I think as a person of color, that's something that you're always aware of, even as an actor, I'm always aware of. You know, I'm just representing this character. I'm not obligated to represent everyone that falls under this racial or cultural um, jurisdiction. But if I'm true and specific to who I'm playing, that the universal message will come out of that. So we really worked hard to create this real character with a whole life and a whole backstory and, and specific things about her as a kid that, that were true to her that ultimately would speak to the masses. I love subliminal messaging and kids stuff. And I don't know if anybody here watches Bluey with their kids. That's not a show for the kids. That's a show for grown-ups because it teaches grown-ups how to actually interact with their children and play with them and not just yell at them to pick up their toys. <laughs> and what I liked about this book is that it had that same value for me where it's an instructional book for a grown-up on how to talk to a child who is upset and, and fighting something and struggling because it's the grown-up that validates the feeling and says, yeah, of course you feel that way. I remember that feeling. I felt it too. I just, that part of the book, you know when you can feel the swell of music in a song, when it's like the build, the build of that moment where she's speaking to her grandmother and the grandmother's relating to her in all of these really, um, really meaningful ways that validate the feeling. That was so well done. Thank and I, you. Yeah, I, I just love the craftsmanship of it. It did feel like a song where you've got, you know, your, your verses and things, and then you hit that. Th that was the Whitney Houston section <laughs> of the book. The That's what I'm saying. That was the big note. Yeah. That, well, was, that was very intentional, note. too. I mean, we, we really wanted, again, because 
a lot of my inspiration came from reading aloud and knowing that so much of the read aloud stories that were fun for grown-ups to read had a real lyricism to them. And then those are also often the books that the kids kept reaching for mm -hmm. or that they would read or read first, right? Because they memorized the rhythm to it. And reading a picture book can be like that. As Philippa said, you know, often very much like a, like a poem or like a song. And so we wrote it very intentionally in, a, in like kind of a lyrical rhythm. And now we're going to adopt what you said. <laughs> it's going to yeah. crescendo. Mm -hmm. Whitney Houston. Um, yeah. I can't wait that, to hear you guys read this now. <laughs> but that was like, I'm really, I appreciate that you noticed that because that was yeah. so, certainly our intent. No, it, it feels good to read. And like my, my daughter just like snuggled in and like sat a little bit yeah. taller when we got to that section because it feels important. Yeah. She's talking about all these huge important life moments. I remember going to America. I remember going to college. I remember marrying your grandpa. I remember bringing a baby home. And I had those butterflies every time. And so it was a sign that something wonderful was about to happen. Just such a great message. So you guys do all that work together. How do the pictures then come in? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Chin Lang, yeah. who is so fabulous and was the most amazing person to collaborate with. She's extraordinarily talented. And we loved her from moment one. And it was an instant connection. She was able to bring it to life in the exact way we wanted. You've said this before, that like handmade quality about yeah, the pictures. Yeah, we wanted, we really wanted to, because, you know, in these picture books, you're writing the words, and then <laughs> there's all this extra story that we're thinking yeah. about that we're sort of writing in the margins, like maybe here there's a picture of Spotty and she's singing to her stuffed animals. Like that's all in there okay. when we hand in this draft. But Chin was able to capture, I think, a, a very nostalgic yeah. time. Like we intentionally were like, please like, don't put any tech yeah. in this story because yes, it is based on my childhood, which was very much like growing up in the 90s. And, and I think like, you know, we were very aware that that was a different time for kids. But I still think that there's a universal message in this, which is like, yeah, you get nervous and kids still go up and perform now and not having like a phone or something. And that was like super important to us and super intentional. But yeah, she made it so handmade and beautiful. And there's these watercolors in it, which I love my, my grandmother, who was inspired or inspired this story? She was a painter and she used watercolors oh, too. Really? Yeah. So this is very much. I'm like, oh, I love this because it just feels right. It feels perfect. Yeah. It's so sweet. So let's talk about your grandmother. Is this who you? Hermia dedicated? Sue. Yeah. Her name yeah. was Hermia. Yeah. Well, that was her. Like Midsummer. Well, well, that was her chosen. So a lot of like. Um, immigrants from Asia who come here, they choose like an American name to yeah. have. And Hermia was the one that she chose, but yes. That's like, incredible. From Shakespeare. Yeah, she was a pianist and a performer in her own right. And she loved the arts and you know, we connected. We, we like would sing together at the piano and it was lovely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so sweet. What about you, your dedication in here? Hudson and Nolan, is that you too? <laughs> Hello boy. Well, how does it feel to have your mom write a book? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's cool. You know, when, when I was working on my books, there's all this talk about it, right? There's like talk for years. And at a certain point, your family's like, okay. Yeah. What book? <laughs> cool. Let me know when that happens. And then it does, and it feels so nice. So... How are you feeling with your family right now? Just really validated? Oh, it's so great. It's yeah. so great to have everybody here and everybody watching who's far away. It's Yay. just amazing to celebrate this book. I mean, it's been since 2018, and there has been many things that have happened since then, including a pandemic. Yeah. Um, also would just mention that we wrote this book, you know, mostly over FaceTime. Right. So yeah. that was an interesting uh, artistic experiment, and it worked, and it was so joyful. It really kept me grounded for during that time, you know, feeling completely lost. The theater was closed down, you know, what was happening to the world, and we got to meet once, twice a week to just chat about this sweet little girl. We called her our girl. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Because you got two boys, right? Yeah. Like, this is your girl. She's the one. I like that. How'd we settle on the name Piper? Well, it, it is like when you name like a character. My name. <laughs> <laughs> my nickname is Pippa. Um, you know, if you know me very well, you probably call me Pippa. I, I thought Piper was appropriate because it's kind of spunky, but also like a, a Piper, like a bird, or like a like a yeah. you know like a person who plays the pipe, right? So there's like a song quality to it, and it just felt right. That's that subtle. That like mixed mess, like oh, 
Oh, she's a piper, get yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. She's a performer. Intention. All right, I like subtext. Um, so what's going to happen to Piper? Because this certainly isn't a one-off. Like, have you guys, <laughs> if you're meeting twice a week from 2018 on, I know there's a whole Piper universe. Right? So what else is this little girl up to? We've got big dreams for her. I mean, she had a lot of adventures before we settled on the one that we found. Yeah, talk to me about some of these like side adventures. Oh my gosh. Wow. One of our, well, I loved this idea and this is somewhere like in my journal and it'll come true at some point, but the idea that um, like we were imagining the immigrant story and then we were thinking of these joutsa, these dumplings um, and these like dumpling ships that maybe she was imagining being on. You know, like that music could take her somewhere yeah. in her imagination. And a I was like- Keyboard sidewalk we had yes. for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, like, like fantasy oh, kind Yeah, of. she's like kind of going into her mind. And then I was like, well, this is starting to get like a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we were all out of our minds at that point. It's definitely an adult book now. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a minute, no. But, but things like that, you know, like the writing process is so cool because you can go down a path yeah. And it's, and it's full, and it's an experience, and then you can say, nope, that's not it. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing to practice, yeah. you know, letting go of things when you're writing. Yeah. But ultimately, like, you kind of got to go down those paths so you can figure it out for yourself. Like, okay, well, that's, like, the joy and the level of enthusiasm that we want from her. So I think our enthusiasm for the dumpling ships and the keyboard sidewalks, like, that translated to just Piper herself and how she is in the world with her foot slapping against the pavement and she's humming along, you know, in, in the library and whistling in, the, in school and, you know, that spunk in her, that creative spunk, I feel like was translated. It lasted. It lasted. We also, it was much longer yeah. in the beginning. Picture book, the whole shtick is like, take it out, take it out, take it out. So being able, you know, as you said before, like a poem or something to be able to, to we wrote a lot. And then our extraordinary editor, Lee Wade at Random House, yeah. really helped, really helped, like, I, yes, Lee, um, was like, I love it. And now it needs to be, you know, one tenth that length or whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot, so much of it is actually pulling back and then having to say, well, then what stanzas can we use that really encompass all of what we're trying to say? Every word has, has to really have something to it, has to have a meaning to it because we can't describe this moment for four pages. It's gonna be a stanza. You're right. Yeah, but that she's got some piece. adventures. We're, we're excited about her. We have oh, yeah. big dreams for her. I listen. And her world. We liked, you know, Y'all need she a has TV a whole world show. that hasn't come out. <laughs> she said it. TV show. <laughs> As a woman that watches kids' TV every day, <laughs> um, I would really appreciate this TV show because this could be like a, a really nice moment to connect. I do love kids' books, programming, anything where it's it's a lesson for the parent as well. And I think that this is like perfect for that. And I love the idea that there's so many feelings that a kid could have and every exactly. book could be about a different feeling. Exactly. Yes, yes. that's right. There's a, there's a, there are rainbow colored index cards somewhere with a lot of stuff on them that I we've gone it. through. I just want to yeah. be there with the yarn. Like exactly. Connecting the <laughs> that's pins. That's our next step. Yarn. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Put that yeah, on yes. and yarn. We're yeah, on it. Yeah. Yeah. Maris, you were a little girl once. I sure was. What parts of you fit into Piper here? Like what was, you know, obviously Philippa is the performer and, you know, adding a cultural element that's so important to this story. For you, what'd you pull from that little girl experience? Yeah. Well, I actually loved the same stuff when I was very little. I danced as a child. Yeah. Um, so I loved being on stage and I loved performing and I loved, I mean, I danced there was, I did not walk from one room to the next as a child. I cool. danced to the next room. You know, that's yeah. kind of how I was. Um, when Piper sings to her closest friends, she has all her stuffed animals. That wasn't me singing, but I was shoved into the entire animal, like E.T., because mm -hmm. my, my brother, Stephen Pasquale, uh, put me there and would take pictures. And oh, <laughs> art, direct, yeah. art direct me a little bit. <laughs> We had some fun inspiration from that moment, which was awesome. Um, so there's a couple little tidbits that were very directly inspired. And then certainly, you know, now, because as you're saying, it's, it's very much for adults about talking to their children, but also adults for themselves, right? I mean, wouldn't we all do a little, 
a little better, have a little more internal peace to be more curious about ourselves and others, right? Listen, Let's we wouldn't have here. a whole generation of people pleasers if, as kids, we were told like, yeah, that feeling's valid, baby. Cool. <laughs> Instead, we were like, don't you mess this up. Don't yeah. show it. Don't you don't show it. Don't you blow this. <laughs> um, no this method seems so much healthier. <laughs> I love That's the it. hope. Yeah. So little, it's just a little tool. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing. You're right. It's just a tool because she's one story. She's one little girl, right? So the, the, the idea of it's not, it's not prescriptive for everybody. For someone, those feelings, they're not so much butterflies. It's, it's really angst. Yeah. And this is not right for them, right? So for her, it's very specific that indeed this is about her loving this thing. This is about her being quiet with her nanai and listening to her nanai's guidance and example and role modeling and then choosing for herself what's right. Yeah. Right? We didn't want to go down the path of... I mean, we had a whole conversation about this. We were, I was like, I'm a little bit concerned that we have the language making it feel like anxious feelings equal butterflies equal good. And so we wanted to be specific to her experience that she's assessing for herself. Mm -hmm. What are these feelings? What do they feel like? And why, did, why do I feel that way? And do I still want to do this? Mm -hmm. Because we didn't want it to seem like some sort of prescriptive thing. Like every time you feel anxious, just say hi. Like, maybe you don't want to say hi, you know? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you want to say, ooh, hello, and no thank you, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that's an option as well. Right. Yeah. Well, I love that she so clearly loves performing. That's what sets the whole tone. Because if she didn't and then was anxious, that's what you're, you mean, like, yes. run. That's your body <laughs> saying, Or just go. figure something else out. Like, yeah. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. No, yeah. no. but it's so clear how much she loves performing. Right. And right. so if there was a song that Piper Chen was like, that was her song. It doesn't have to be a Whitney Houston song, but <laughs> it could be. Well, I'll tell you what. This, so this cover. Yes. Um, Piper's in her little, I guess, nighty, and um, she's holding this hairbrush. This was based, I'm fairly sure, based off of a picture that I sent to Chin when she was seeking inspiration for oh. these pictures. And I was definitely probably belting Aretha Franklin respect at oh, the top of my yes. lungs. <laughs> um, wearing like, you know, like a slip and like a weird <laughs> thing on my head and holding a brush and just like rocking it out. You know, that's, that, that was my jam. Every little girl needs that anthem. Oh yeah, on, like on top of a coffee table. It was awesome. I'm into that. My first stage, a coffee table. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so you guys are going to read this book for us now, and then I'm going to get into some of these questions that the Great. audience has given us. I'm really excited to hear how the two of you do this now. Thank you. We're going to read. Go the We're starting here. Mm -hmm. Piper Chen sings. This is Piper Chen. Piper loves to sing. She twirls through rooms, bounces up the stairs, and hops foot to foot, always singing out a tune. She sings good morning to the peaking sun and good night to the cresting moon. She sings to the orange-chested robins whistling outside her window and to the chanting frogs in the faraway pond, and they sing back to her. Piper performs for her closest friends, with Spotty on backup, always. She listens to Nai Nai's homemade chaozi pop as they cook and hums with pleasure as she eats them. She hears the world's rich sounds as beats and rhythms and adds her voice to its orchestra. On a bright spring morning, Piper scoots to school, slapping her foot against the pavement and bopping her head to the beat. When Ms. Lopez takes attendance, Piper belts out, Here! <laughs> she practices her whistle when she colors and cuts and hums quietly while looking for the perfect book. In her favorite class, Piper stands tall and is focused. She feels the chorus of voices vibrating through her. When the class takes a break, 
Mr. Harris asks Piper if she wants to sing one of the solos in the spring sing. Piper lets her excitement answer, yes. Yet when they pra start practicing again, something doesn't feel right. Piper is suddenly frozen and she can only sing in a worried whisper. If you feel nervous, Piper, that is normal, Mr. Harris assures her. You have the choice to sing a solo or sing with the class. Just tell me what you decide next time we meet. When Piper returns home from school that day, she does not twirl through the rooms, bounce up the stairs, or hop foot to foot. Piper is not singing. Listening to the tune from Nine Eyes Piano, Piper does not hum along. She does not sing one note. Nanai is sitting upright at the piano bench, as she often does, one foot resting on the pedal, never wiggling or even rattling her teacup. She starts playing their favorite song. Piper, I know you are there, but you aren't singing. Piper climbs next to Nanai and tells her about the solo. What if I forget the words? What if I sound like a frog, she says. When we practiced, it felt like butterflies were having a dance party in my belly. What if they come back? Nainai pauses her playing and smiles. Hudie, she says to Piper. What is hudie, asks Piper. It is the Chinese word for butterfly, answers Nainai. I remember being your age, the very first time I touched piano keys, playing along to the rain's beat against the window. Nanai plays the keys to sound like raindrops and Piper giggles. Before my first piano recital, the butterflies danced in me too. Go away, Houdie, I begged, but they just flew faster. They would only settle once I began to play. Eventually, I realized the butterflies visited to tell me when something exciting was ahead, Nanai explains. They flapped fast when I left China and traveled to America, and I felt them fluttering the day I graduated from music school. They flew through me when I married your Ye Ye. They hovered over us when we brought your father home for the first time. And they twirled unstoppably on the day I became a US citizen, she says. Now, when they greet me, I greet them back. Hello, Houdie. Ni hao. Piper, do you want to sing the solo? Piper blinks and thinks and nods. Nanai resumes playing their favorite song, and Piper finally sings along. Weeks later, on the night of the show, Piper feels the butterflies flapping their wings and flying side to side. When it is her class's turn to sing, they walk out slowly. Piper sees the spotlight shining like the bright, welcoming sun, and its reflection on stage like the inviting moon. She hums to herself. Hello, Houdie. Piper steps into the glow. The butterflies rest, and she sings. She sings like she sings to her stuffed animals and Spotty the dog, the sun and moon and stars, the trees and birds and frogs. She sings because she loves to sing, and her love is alive in that moment, fluttering through her, her family and friends, and her loving Nai Nai fluttering up and out into the world. Yay. The end. <laughs> the end. Oh, man. That line, her love is alive in that moment, I just, what an important thing for a kid to hear. That those big feelings are just like your love. You care so much about this thing. Create. Put it out there. I just love it. <laughs> All right. Well, so does everybody else because we have a whole bunch of questions oh, for you guys. Okay. I'm going to save this one. I really like that one. Uh, oh, Florence wants to know, what is your favorite dish to cook at home? I like a sidebar question. <laughs> Like, cool, cool, glad you wrote a book. Is there a cookbook next? <laughs> Honestly, that was one of the a ideas big idea. that we what? had. What? Is to... Piper in the kitchen? Probably she 2018 could be. through 2022, she was in the kitchen. <laughs> oh. 
Ooh, what's our favorite dish to I mean, make? To I make probably, chicken cutlets is probably my dish. Little yeah. chicken cutlet action, some good signs. That's a good family favorite. Is that a hit? We got a woo. We got a woo for the chicken Word. cutlets. Cool. Um, mine's probably risotto. <gasps> and that's right. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's really kind of difficult to make, but not really. You just got to know. You just got to keep stirring. It's kind of meditative. That's why <laughs> right. I like it. You just got to keep Don't going. Don't walk away. <laughs> Don't walk away. Yeah. Don't drink too much wine when you're cooking. Uh huh. Because you'll forget and it will turn into a weird, sticky rice mess. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. All also, right. it should be known that Philippa Sue is a world class cook. Oh! Oh, stop. Legit. Stop. No. Stop. The Pasquale family will attest. <laughs> world class. Is that what happens at Christmas? You just like put her to work and this I is how the these cookies. whole things. I make the cookies. She makes the cookies. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. We did some Thanksgiving. Okay. I'm just seeing more and more books in the future. Um, <laughs> Okay, so hold on. Someone did not sign this, but they said, hi guys, thank you for writing this wonderful book, exclamation mark. What about Piper do you relate to the most? I mean, I probably relate the most just to her beginning, right? Like she's kind of twirling through rooms and just sort of doing her thing. Like yeah. she's got a great energy. We talk so much about the seriousness of her and the emotions and her feeling. And that's a big piece of this book, but she's a fun, sweet, energetic little girl, and I, I think I had and have, I hope I still have some of that. <laughs> I relate to her small body, big feelings. Aww. Like when I was a kid, it was just like, tiny body, huge feelings. Yeah. And you know, I think that there was a part of my, my creative life and my creative brain that developed because I had such big feelings, I just had to put it somewhere, and that was into curiosity. I think. Yeah. What my daughter really loved was the snake on the bed. Yeah. In the bedroom. And and I think okay. this new generation of little girls aren't raised with all like rainbows, unicorns, girly stuff like we are. Like this is a dinosaur dragon reptile child. <laughs> and so when I she saw that, she really connected with it and was like, oh, I fit here too. You know? She's both. She's wearing this dress, she's singing, she's throwing around, and she's got the pet snake. Like, yeah. Venom yeah, in her bed. That's something that I don't think we said she has a snake. She has a, like, we didn't label those things for Chin. Chin just brought that just to knew. us. And that's what's so wonderful about her work is she really saw who this character yeah. was yeah. and ran with it. And so then you get snake. And isn't it crazy how just like one little tiny detail makes the difference? Absolutely. To a kid at home? Mm -hmm. Like, all of a sudden. This could be me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, okay. Oh, this is a great question for you guys. What were some similar books that you read as a child or that you read to the kids that reminded you of this book? Like tonally, when you were, you know, pitching the book, what were some reference books where you were like, I like how this feels? My favorite children's book, potentially of all time, is The Word Collector. Do you know that I book? I don't know that one. Hillary, I'll send it to you. It's so beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it is so beautiful, and I cry every single time. Yeah. I'm not even trying to put our book in this category. It is truly a work of art. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it's very, it's, it's turn the page and turn the page. It sort of has a momentum to it that I think we were, that, that type of a book really inspires me. It's the one I want to read aloud the most. That, that type of a book I think was the most inspiring in terms of the writing for her, not mm -hmm. necessarily character-wise, but the writing for her, that the messaging, of course, was much bigger and, and certainly very different than that one, but that that sort of vibe and feeling and flow of a story, of a read-aloud story in particular. That's a really tough question. It is. Oh, gosh. I mean, um, I know I already said The Giving Tree, but I, I think The Giving Tree, because there was something generous mm. about the story not just being for one person, that mm -hmm. it really had a lot of people in mind, even though it was about just a very simple thing. And I also think that idea of simplicity was very useful. Like, that book is phenomenal, and it's really just about a tree. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know? you know, for me, when I was reading this, uh, going back to girlhood, the books that I'm going to reference are for a little bit older, but I was obsessed with, like, the American Girl Doll books and the Babysitter's Club because Babysitter's it was... Babysitter's Club a collection of girls that were totally different from each other and yet they're all feeling the same big feelings and able to connect in that way and solve problems together. And so for me, this felt like ju the junior version of those books where you're exposed to somebody that maybe is a little bit different from you, but the same. Mm -hmm. 
you know? And, and girlhood is so much about that exploration of like, how do we connect? I want, I want to be your friend. How do we do that, you know? Yeah. More girl action. Okay, so from the live stream, we have Zamina, and she says, what do you hope that young readers and their families take away from reading this book together? Mindfulness. <laughs> so for the person that doesn't know what mindfulness is, because I think living in New York, sometimes we take for granted that everybody is practicing mindfulness. You know, let's, let's break it down. <laughs> Fine. You're right, Hillary. It should be more than a one-word answer. I'm more than just mindfulness, of course, but that's a big piece of it, I think, is, is what we've been saying all night, right? Is, is what's happening for me? What's going on? Can I, can I be aware of my body? Can I be aware of where I'm holding things in my body? Can I be aware of what's coming up for me in my body? Can I be mindful in all the areas of my life? It doesn't have to be sitting and meditating for 30 minutes a day. It can be being mindful while you're eating, being mindful while you're taking a shower, just being present in your own life so that you're in it, that you're actually acting within it right now right? So we're not looking back on the day, et cetera, so that you're in each moment of it. And she's, we hope she's a little girl that kind of shows that. She's in all of her moments, and she's having fun in a lot of her moments. And then when she's not, and she's having a hard time, she's in that moment too. I'd like them to take away an idea of empowerment. Yeah. And I think when we say empowerment, like it's a big word, and it needs to, to feel big in my mind for some reason. But and being empowered can be as simple as just making a choice about something that you're aware about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think for Piper, too, that, that also another thing I hope people take away is this idea of self-love. That, that she loves to sing, but I think part of that is also her self-love. Like It's something she knows about herself that she loves to do. And so she grants herself that ability to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the empowerment, I think, comes in there. And it's small, it's quiet, but it's real. Well, let's say it doesn't always have to be like, ah, damn the man. Like, it can be <laughs> about you, you know? Like, and that choice is so important. And I love... Hey, what's up? Oh, bye, bye honey. <laughs> Target audience, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> love that. She's wearing a cute little dress. Bye, yeah. Cora. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. sweet. No, for... for all children, but specifically for little girls, knowing that you can make choices about yourself is so important. And also that she knows she's good at singing. <laughs> like there's so much false yeah. modesty that like the grown-ups in the room have to exercise, but a kid should be able to be like, no, I'm great at this. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Yes. Good for her. I think also, too, if I can just add this, Lori, really briefly, the, hopefully they're curious about their own backgrounds. You know, of like, where did we come from? You know, however many generations back, we don't all have an immediate immigrant story, but however, where did we come from? What was a language that we spoke however many generations ago, or you, grandma and grandpa, whatever it was? Hopefully, Nanai's story can maybe ask some of those questions to their families. That's a great point. Yeah. Oh, I love curious little kids. Yeah. Um, all right. Kim is asking, Kim, I'm on the same team as you, babe. Uh, are you planning any future? book collaborations. Is there anything that we want to tease on the heels of this? <laughs> We're going to do something else together. Yeah. For sure. When? How long that will take? I don't know. <laughs> but we've got too many journals over lychee martinis <laughs> full of ideas. And quite frankly, like the world keeps changing. We keep changing. I think um, just as an artistic practice, just, just to keep writing, I think is just valuable. But but yeah, we want her to keep going. What you guys learn about each other? Oh, so, so much. So much. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Go, you go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. No, you go first. <laughs> I mean, also, I don't think anything was like surprising or shocking. It was just everything we already knew or everything I felt I hopefully knew. Also, my brother and I are very close. So like, this is his wife. She was not going to be <laughs> a mystery. <laughs> Where'd she exactly? come from? Who are yeah. you? Um, how much joy we had together. Your old soulness is, I mean, Pip Philippa's energy is just magnetic, right? Mm -hmm. And so that can sometimes seem in contrast back to holding two at once. That can seem in contrast sometimes with the fact that you also bring an extraordinary, peaceful, 
energy and presence everywhere you go. And you did that in this collaboration, in all of our collab. You made such a safe, creative space, listening to ideas, taking them far, bringing them back, adding to them. It was just a really free, liberated process to go through together. And I got the fortune to learn so much more about your family, because you're part of my family. But I'm, you know, not part of yours in the same way, right? And it was fun, you know, even at Thanksgiving this year, seeing, you know, talking to your mom and brother, I was like, uh, we're so much more intimate than you know. <laughs> like, we talk about your so childhood much about your so family. much. I know so yeah. many more of the stories. I know everything about you. I know yeah. everything, <laughs> you know? But that part was really special because when we're in, and, you know, we have a big family, a big, loud family. And so to be able to really focus on, like, what did you guys do? What were all of your traditions? What did it look like in Libertyville? What, what was it? it that you grew up with, it was, I learned so much about Pippa, none of it that surprised me, but all of it that just kind of reiterated what a welcoming, warm, peaceful, magnetic person you are. Thank you, Maris. You're welcome. It's so true. What I learned about Maris, this is something I already knew, but I was like, oh, this is definitely true. Okay. Maris is the rock. Maris is like two feet on the ground, she's got a plan, She's got an idea. She's got something to add to an idea that you have. She's just ready and equipped in a way that is so generous, but I know takes so much to do, but you're just, you just happen to be so good at it. But you do it flawlessly. And I also learned about your childish side a little bit, about your curious side. You know, like Maris is a psychotherapist and is a mother and, you know, she holds it down in a way that I've never seen and I admire it so much. But I also got to see you like play and, and have this artistic existence that I think I see, you know, in conversations, you know, post dinner when we're talking about the things that we're seeing and the things that we like and, you know, you, you add your, your spin and your opinion on something that we're watching and we have a great conversation about it. But to actually create something with you like that I don't think people understand unless you've done it how intimate and special yeah. that relationship is to, to bring something to life together you know that nothing will ever compare to that in terms of getting to know you in this yeah. way and so I'm just so grateful and you know truly like the merit without Maris this book would not be because Maris was truly the one who was like I've got a draft <laughs> <laughs> we're meeting next week like, let's put it on the books. And I was like, yes, 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 this is what I need. This is what I need. I'm, I'm like, I'm floating over here and you're bringing me back down. Yeah. You're like rooting me into the ground in a way that was so valuable. That's funny. <laughs> it's true though. Little, little well, that, little that balance of energy, the old soul, really like, like safe to be around energy, but also like the girlishness and the bouncing around is such a perfect example in this book because you have Piper, but something that was really striking to me is when she comes up behind her grandmother and doesn't start singing and without turning around, her grandmother knows like, hey, mm -hmm. there's something going on. That kind of quiet acknowledgement just feels so nice mm -hmm. to have a grown up see you that way yeah. and so to have both it feels like a great exercise in improv there's a lot of yes mm -hmm. and there is a lot of yes and in this book. Uh -huh. holding two feelings at once yeah. yeah love it all right so this last card is from jennifer d and she has two questions that are both really good so we're gonna do both um she says congratulations and she says what is your favorite writing routine to get your ideas flowing like do you just get on facetime and Go or did you Kinda. give each other homework? Both. Both. I yeah. Early days were like, what do you got today? And like, well, I was thinking about this, and that, I mean, we would list off. You know, I would literally read things from my journal. Mm -hmm. And then there were some times where we'd like, ooh, we'd be like, ooh, ooh, that, that, that. Next week, let's meet and let's like elaborate on that mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. um, or we'd be talking, and I'd be, you know typing something out, and then, to your point, I'd be like, I'll clean this up and send it to you later, you know? <laughs> like, and then that yeah. would be a revised draft and send it away. We did a lot of track changes, a lot of comment bubbles, that type of thing. Yeah. That was a big piece. Yeah, and then, and then sometimes just being, like, I remember there were a couple of really great conversations where, like, we both were like, I don't have anything today. <laughs> <laughs> Want to just talk and chat? And then by the end of the conversation, there would be something there, mm -hmm. which was yeah. awesome. And I think just an example of how like, if you're a writer or aspiring to write, you kind of just have to set, at least for me, set aside, like to set aside a time and dedicate it to writing, even if that just meant, I don't know what I have. Yeah. Let's just sit here in that for a second. 
that is very informative. Now, we've spoken a lot about the family relationship in this book, but I want to end um, with asking this last question. You know, I, public schools are very near and dear to my heart. My kids go to public school. I went to public school. They need help. Um, this question is, who is your most inspiring teacher? The teachers in this book are lovely. They see this little girl. They tell her it's okay if you just want to sing with the class. Like, who are the teachers that did that for you and saw you? Well, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Houts. Yay, Mrs. Houts! I don't know where she is in the world. She was a really, really special woman who, you know, in fourth grade, sometimes having someone read aloud is great, and sometimes, you know, you're doing your own thing. She would read aloud. She was warm. She was exceptional. She was encouraging. She was a really, really special teacher. Every year on Teacher Appreci Appreciation Week, I went to public school as well, yeah. and they had us write a letter. I wrote her every single oh. year. She was a really, really special woman and a really special teacher. She would be, she would be, be my call for sure. Shout out to two teachers that I had um, that were my dance teacher and my piano teacher. Heidi Sissel was my piano teacher. Heidi now lives in California and, and she was a choir teacher for a very long time, but she was my first introduction to learning music. And it was like fun and vivacious and she had an amazing energy. And I'll just never forget feeling so excited about music because of her, even though I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I'm just a kid, but she it really- It worked out for you. She, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had kept up with piano. Every, every uh, by the way, if there's any kids watching, every adult who played piano yeah. as a kid is like, I really wish I kept mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. So just remember that. Do that. <laughs> but also my dance teacher, Miss Lisa, um, I mentioned I got really nervous as a kid. And so one instance was this dance recital. I was like maybe three, or maybe four, and it was one of my first dance recitals, and I learned the whole routine. I had been in class all year, taking class, and then this recital comes up, and it's at the high school, the big stage with the big red curtain. Oh, no. And I get there, and we're like, you know, being held in the cafeteria, like wearing our little flower crown costumes that they had made <laughs> us, and I just remember being like, I'm not going out there. <laughs> There's no way that they're gonna make me do that. I'm staying right here in this cafeteria, sitting at this table with these older dancer girls. You guys can go out without me. Mm -hmm. And and they did, and and I missed. <laughs> I, I didn't go out. And I'm sure my parents were like, what the heck? Sure. <laughs> but but I remember um, I was sitting alone at this table and just, you know, watching these older girls with their point shoes and, you know, like it's so vivid in my mind. And I remember Miss Lisa coming up to me. I don't even know her last name. <laughs> Miss Lisa came up to me and she was like, well, would you like to go on stage and do a bow with me alone? Like when, oh. when we have to go do the bows? And I was like, okay, well, that sounds okay. I guess I can do that. <laughs> And I, and you know, they're, everybody's going out, they're all bowing, everyone's clapping, and then my class goes out, they bow, and then I come out with Miss Lisa. Love it. And she like throws a hand to me, and I'm just like, and bow. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I like lift my head up, and I'm like looking out, and I'm like, okay, this isn't too, this isn't too bad. Okay, maybe next time. Think if she hadn't done that, the trajectory of your life. I know. Maybe I, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be sitting here. Maybe. <sighs> Thank you, I, yeah. Miss Lisa. Lisa. Thanks, Miss Lisa. And also that you just like, were like, not today. <laughs> not to, and like, grown ups were just like, cool kid. I love it. Yeah, I love no, exactly. it so much. I hope we all honor the little girls inside of us, the Pipers of the world. You guys have made something really, really beautiful, and you should be so thank proud you. of yourself. Thank you for Hillary. being here today. Thank you to so celebrate I know, it. Hillary, thank you for being here. Oh my, here. are yes. you kidding thank me? Thank you. You're the best. I was so excited to be asked. Thank you guys for coming. So you're a part of our Piper Chen Sings team now, so it's your obligation to go out into the world and tell everyone you know uh, <laughs> yes. to get this book, get it as Mother's Day gifts, get it for end of school gifts. Like, girl, we're going to market this. I'm on the team now. Recitals are coming it. up. Oh, my it. gosh. The spring recital season? It's recital season. Guys, I love this. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight. Please Thanks, give everyone. it up for Maris and Philippa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys signing after this? All right, thank you guys.